I could have sworn she had been there. I had seen her face, that pure pearly face, and I had seen her hair tangled and knotted in a bun like seaweed. She had been at that party. She had given me that letter, that, that violent David, letter. David, I'm sorry. If you read the whole passage today, we won't have a chance to critique any. <laughs> of course, uh, what, how did it sound? Um, a little flowery, but the plot's intriguing. Intriguing? Good. Good. Why? The best books, as soon as you open the covers, hold your wrists there They're like handcuffs until you get to the final page. That's why marginals are so popular, as long as the story remains compelling. Well, true enough, but as I was saying about flowery, it tends to, when you over-describe something, confuses and it frustrates your reader and it, it, it comes across pretentious. And of course I wouldn't want to do that, but I won't sacrifice my style for the, the reader. The principle's still there, but if your reader is bogged down in fluff and stuff, then your style won't be noticed. It'll just sound like slop. My themes will remain evident. Your themes? Yes. I want to rattle the literary world, Mr. Lewis. I want to hit it hard and wake it up. We've been in this, this literary bog of poor fiction for the last 40 years. Hemingway's dead, Steinbeck is dead, Bradbury hasn't written anything in decades. David, you're 17. Yes, but I want to be the next Orwell. And I can. Here, let me show you. The Quill in Hand magazine is having a short story contest. The winner is awarded $500 plus publication in the October issue. You know, contests can be smart, can be a good way to make money, and I encourage I'm you. not interested in the money, Mr. Lewis. I, I want my work to get out there. People need to hear my message. David, I think you have talent, and you're way ahead of your peers. But you keep talking about wanting to change the way the world thinks. Look, if you're going to preach, preach, but don't do it through writing. But shouldn't fiction be more than just a story? I mean, I want people to better their lives after they read my work. Certainly, books evoke emotion. And that's art. And you want your works to evoke good emotions in people. But you keep talking about changing people's lives. David, that takes being present in their lives. Write a book if you have a story to tell. But be present if you want to change people's lives. But I can reach more people through a book than through conversation. Not just a conversation, David. A friendship. Love soaks deeper than printed words. I want you... Oh, I've got to go. Job interview. You have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. How do you feel about it? I'm confident it will be fine. I want to wish you all the luck and keep running. Of course. Today is just another day to eat, to sleep, to work, to play, to sit, to sin, to watch it all begin again, again, again. Just another way to sleep, to work it all away, to sit and get upsetter and wish it all was better, and sleep and work and eat and sin and play. You all right there, Wood? Thanks.
Thanks. We're three scanty minutes late. Why the rush? Tardiness often robs us of opportunity and the dispatch of our forces. Quoting Machiavelli, do what must be done no matter the damage done in doing. Who said that? He would have. Jeffrey Chaucer, Kenneth Graham, Trisha Lyman, Charlie Martin, Jane Wickham, and our slower comrades, Emily Wood and David Lawrence. I'm so exhorted for you to hear what I've written for today, David. Yeah, I'm exhorted too. All right, fellow wordsmiths, let's begin. How was everyone's week? Well, mine went well. I worked at the charity auction for the retirement home all day on Monday, and I worked on my wood carving for an art show. I wrote a lot. Hey, sorry, of Joseph, uh, could we start the reading? Of course, buddy. Great, well then, if anyone else... Let's not... start with Jane. Oh, you're not ready to read yet. That's okay, you can take all the time that you need. Honestly, you don't need to read until you feel comfortable. Okay. Uh, thanks. You know, I'm just not... Well, uh, in that case, actually, I have something I can read here. Dude, I'll read. Go for it, man. All right. We last left off where Captain Omicron rescued the hot alien princess, right? Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Okay. He looked at her body. It was unbelievably toned. Even though her skin was blue, she was hot. He had just saved her life, too. As was custom on her planet... She was supposed this to... This isn't appropriate. Oh, I was just about to get... Awesome! Yes, um, I actually have something a little more tasteful, if you don't Maybe mind. Maybe you, Charlie? Um, sure, I'll go if no one else wants to. Just read, Charlie. Okay, uh, this has some stuff that you might not understand. Like, you might not Joey, get... can I read, please? You don't have to leave early for work. You're working now? She works at Sonic, buddy. Dude, Sonic is garbage. Why would you let your sister work there? Hey, I'm still in the room. Oh, excuse He's me. He's right, little sis. I told you that when she turned in your application. Um, pardon Lame. me, guys. You should have picked chilies or something. Oh, I really want to hear Charlie. sucks. Jane, help me out here. I don't really... It, you know it. Chili sucks. It's shoddy. So deflective. Hey, I worked at Chili's. For one month, buddy. Hey, guys, this is a writing group, not a water cooler. All right, all right. Calm down, David. It's okay. Trisha can go next. I was beginning to doubt it. Maybe she hadn't been there. Maybe I had sat alone and talked to the wall for four hours that dark, fateful night. That dark night. But as doubt grew, its greatest, the door opened. Good grief, Mom. What are you still doing out? It's summer, Mom. What, where were you? Work. Keeping tradition? What? It's not important. Speaking of work, I won't be able to make it tomorrow, David. I'm sorry. Will I have to fill out any paperwork? No, there's not going to be any tests tomorrow. Dr. Collins is going to be expecting you at one. Yes, I know. How was your day? Suitable. I've got to go to bed. It's so early. It's late, remember. Don't know how 
I'm going to die in, in 30 days. I've been tested positive for HIV. The doctors have had me on medications for months. It's not working. I don't know how I got it. I'm a virgin. I've, I've never done any type of drug. All they can link this to is, is a series of transfusions I had when I was a kid. Something must have gone wrong back then. Somebody did this to me. This, this changes everything. I am going to die in 30 days. What now? All right, chumps, before we begin, the youth pastor of this building, you know the guy that lets us use this place. He said if there's any leftover coffee stuff in the kitchen, we can go ahead and have some. So would anybody like some? I'll have some. All right, Emily, would you mind grabbing us three coffees? Of course not. Need some help? Solitude is independence. Herman Hesse. All right, let's begin, friends. Who would like to read first? Charlie never got two last time. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> this is called the Eclipsy Glock. <laughs> the what? <laughs> Come on, you know Charlie Martin lives on Middle Earth. Yeah, what was that, the uh, itchy gloss? Oh my gosh, I hate itchy gloss. Uh, go ahead, Charlie. He, he was a mighty creature. His feet were obnoxiously large, seeing as how they squashed a good number of woodland animals with every stride he took. The bumble tug suffered the most. What is this, Pooh Bear? No, it's just like made up, like fantasy and stuff. Never mind, someone else can go. No, Charlie, it's your turn. Come on, Jean, you never read. I totally want to hear some of your compilations. Trish, she doesn't have to read if she doesn't want to. Okay, Joey.
It was like she was staring through a blue glass. The world around was overtaken by shimmering phantoms, falling from the sky and rising from the waters. She knew if she were to cry, a drop of dew would roll down her face. If she were to laugh, rose petals would spring from her mouth. The air tingled, the grass hugged her ankles, and she knew this, this is what it is like to be in love. Don't you love the color? Yeah, it's isn't really it gorgeous? gorgeous? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. We have to totally go to the mall or something. Completely. Yeah. I mean, like, we were at the car lot and I was like, Daddy, could I please have this car? Oh, and hey, he was like, He left your stuff. I was coming back for them. Can I talk to you? Um, sure. Why don't you ever read for any of the writing group? This is wonderful writing. You've read my stuff? I know, I apologize, it was intrusive, but it's wonderful. No, it's not. Look, I appreciate the flattery, but I'm just not comfortable reading. Why on earth not? It's just who I am. Even if you've never read for any of us, you should still write a, write a short story. There's a contest. The winner is awarded $500 and publication in the Quill and Hand Writing Magazine. No. The judges won't know you, you won't know them. There's nothing on the line. Look, I won't read for our group, and I certainly won't send my stuff off to a pack of condescending strangers. Jane, don't you understand? You could win this. Thanks, Lawrence, but I gotta go. Nice car, Trisha. Do you like her? Hey, hey, Wood! <sighs> hey, Wood! Wood! <sighs> Can't you call me by my first name? You know, it's been irking me for a while. Why are you always rushing around for Joseph? I like helping people. You also like quotes, correct? Mm -hmm. Thought takes man out of servitude into freedom. Longfellow said that. So, now I can't think for myself. Thanks. It's admirable to be useful, but one day you're just going to find yourself used. And the insults just keep coming. I apologize. I'm not trying to be rude. Well, you're a jerk prodigy, then. What? 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 It doesn't even matter what Mr. Lewis said. I can't influence the world with my writing now. I don't have the chance. I won't even live past the contest's deadline. But I must do something before I'm gone. These people don't care what I say. They don't care to change. Good grief! Charlie Martin! Hey! 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 Are you okay? Uh, I think so. I, I, I mean, yeah. Who was that? Um, I, I, I don't know. You need some water. There's not someone to lose by here. Come with me. His cheek shouldn't swell too much. Hmm. You know, he told me you ran the thug off. That was noble. That Charlie seems like a lonely guy. You unravel people easily. It's as obvious as the sunrise. Do you remember what we talked about? You're so adamant about impacting lives through writing. But you could impact that young man's life with your time. Look, I, I won't stand by and watch people be violently abused, but I can't be expected to babysit them. You missed the point. If you want to leave a legacy, do so by impacting his life. 
right because you love it, but love and people write about you. I don't have anything to offer. You have a lot to offer, but if you worry about rejection, you're a fool. Look in that kitchen. I have 30 days to live. I have told no one save my mother. I won't tell anyone else. And with such a deadline, I have no choice but to make something of my time here, lest I die a wasteful person. But you see, I have decided that I am not going to die. Everyone else is dying, and I will throw every ounce of my energy into giving them all the opportunity and urging they need to create a life of joy and excellence. While they run out of time, I will make sure each minute they still live burns with significance. Hey, Charlie. Morning. Yeah. Uh, it's David Lawrence. Yeah, I was, um, I was wondering, uh, how would you feel about maybe hanging out, uh, today? You know, just like, walking, talking, whatever you want to do. Oh, uh, okay, that's, that's fine. What, what about tomorrow? Okay, great, great. Awesome. Tomorrow then. A writer's group meeting? Huh. I thought we were only meeting every other day. Okay. Thanks for telling me. Okay, bye. Oh, wait. How, how's that cheek? Speaking of whom, we'll be going to church this Sunday. Again? Didn't we go last week? Yes, and we are going to hit a two-week stride at least. You know, you really should try and go to youth group. The James families always tell me how much their son loves youth group. Yeah, well, I've got a writer's group meeting right now, so... Again? Yeah, bye. All right, my author friends, shall we begin? Well, where 
Where's David? Yeah, where is he? He didn't answer his phone when I called him. I'll call him. Kenneth, why don't you start us out? He'll think we're in the youth building. The church is using it tonight. You know what, Charlie? Hang up. He'll figure it out. But... He's smart, right? Kenneth, go ahead. Uh, I haven't really written anything today. <laughs> Alright, I'll go. The man stood stronger than the rest. His opponents were like deer in front of him. And he was a wolf. Someone failed to tell me something. Hey, you're Mrs. Lawrence's son, right? You sit with her in sermon? Yes, when we come. I'm glad you finally decided to come hang out with us, dude. We were conspiring to spring on you next week and uh, cut the cord. Just kidding, man. I'm Haddon James. I'm not supposed to. This is a misunderstanding. I no, no, look. It'll be fun. I'll, I'll introduce you to everyone. Come on in. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not interested. Haddon! Gentry, we got a fighter. Help me out. Hi, I'm Gentry Claire. What's your name? I'm David Lawrence, and I'm not supposed to be here. Dude, word of advice? Don't be around her too much. I used to date her. Big mistake. She's clean gear and a Cheerio on old carpet. He hasn't dated me or anyone else. Details, shmutails. You coming, dude? No, I, I'm going to go home. Look, what have you got to lose? What's going to drastically change your future by stepping inside? Give us 10 minutes, then you can go. either, David. Whatever. I gotta go. I'll be back. You're right. So, what do you do for fun, David? Uh, I like to write. What do you write about? You want me to draw a quilt head on your forearm? <laughs> no, thanks. Who drew that fox on yours? Philip. Can you draw? Better than that. Lesson needs to start. Yo, everyone, lesson needs to start. Let's go.
What are you looking at, Charlie Martin? Oh, I'm just watching the sky. You don't have to look there. No, I want to I wanna know what's so captivating. I've always wondered, what's, what's in your box? It's nothing. It's not, it's not even worth talking about. I find most every subject has at least a little bit of worth in it. Thretched? Hey, wait! Hey! You just want to find more foolish things about me to make me look even more like a fool. You just want another joke to throw in my face in the next meeting to impress Joseph. Impress Joseph? I can't stand him. Kenneth Graham? He's Joseph's trained seal. What? Trio. I don't understand. You combined trained and seal? Yeah. It's what this box is. Uh, I, I make up words or smash them together. And use them in my stories. <laughs> What? You think I'm weird? Oh, no, 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 no. Shakespeare used to make up words all the time. We still use them today. I wrote thretched because that cloud out there is thin and stretched. Do you have any others? Okay. Here. Pizza. What's it mean? It's an anagram of stupid. But I use it as a noun. Joseph is a pizza. Do you have any positive ones? Okay, okay. Slithy. 